Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Watercolors with Jaylene. For today's project I am going to be painting six different rainbows with different color schemes and little accent pieces um, to make them all very individual. So before I get started I would like to ask that if you have not already liked and subscribed to my YouTube channel if you could go ahead and do that I would really appreciate it. So a quick rundown of today's uh, materials list. I do have the watercolor paper and it's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of Arches um, 140 pound cold press. I have my two paint brushes, a number eight and a number one. I also have a small jar of clean water for my, my brushes. And then I do have my uh, Windsor and Newton. Um, this is a 24 pan. It's a portable set that I actually had purchased to take to the beach or the park so that when I'm doing watercolor painting, you know, it's it's easy to carry. And I like it so much that I use it with a lot of my uh, projects that I'm even painting here at home. And I know I've talked about this before, but I love it so much I have to mention it every time. So I'll put that to the side. Uh, another set of paints that I'll be using today are um, it's just a six set of Comorella, Comorabi, and they are metallic. And with this, I had done my own little cheat sheet to see exactly what each one of the colors would look like on paper, but they just add such neat accents. I thought they would be great in my project for today. So I'll set that aside until we're ready to use it. And so let's get started. Um, so each one of the, uh, rainbows that I'll be creating will have different color schemes. And of course, each one, you know, various colors in each one of these. And I will be doing it wet on dry because I don't want for the colors to, um, to flow together. So for the first one, I think I will start off with some oranges and I do want to get, I want to keep my brush pretty wet with a lot of paint on it. So uh, for each one of the rainbows, you know, it does, it's no, no exact science for sure. And I just want to paint a rainbow. Okay. And then for this one, um, you can see it's kind of just a real loose, free-handed arch with the orange. And then I'm going to take, uh, it's a cadmium red color. And so for the next one, I don't really want to touch the two colors together. We want to keep that little bit of white in between them just so that they don't, uh, you know, so that the colors don't go together. And they, you don't have to worry about specific thickness, uh, how perfect the lines are. We want them to be quite loose and free-handed. Um, so for this one, you know, as I mentioned, I'm doing a lot of oranges, orangish reds. If you want to, you know, maybe... Uh, create your own color schemes using a couple different colors. That's fine, too Now this is a yellow okra that I'm using which it's in that orange and gold tones So there we go. So right now I have three of the rainbow Arches and this one I almost want to kind of put a little more water in there and make it a little more flowy looking. Oh, and I do have my paper towel for blotting. So uh, then as we get down towards the center of this one, I am going to take just a little bit darker of a reddish color. And what I want to do with this one is just put a heart in the middle. I won't do that with all of them, but it is nice to have a heart. It's just kind of fun. 
Okay, so we have that. So while that is drying, because we will be adding to it, a lot of these will be adding layers upon layers upon layers. And then towards the end, once they're all dry, we will take one of our my favorite Micron uh, waterproof permanent markers. This is a 01 nib. So I'll be using this to just kind of add a little bit of black um, accents once I have them all completed. And I think that the black a lot of times just adds some pop to it. So this next one that I'm going to be working on, I'm going to do it in uh, blue tones, okay? So here again, let's just start with, um, this is a, actually this is a ultramarine blue. And I'm not gonna go through and name each one of the colors that I am using. Um, because everyone, you know, you want to be creative and, and come up with your own color schemes. Now, if you want to, you know, take the basics of one of these, you know, if you, if you see one of these that you really like, as far as the blues and the purples and so on and so forth, then, you know, go ahead and, and play with the colors and see, you know, what you like. Everyone's a little bit different with this. And so this is a purplish color. Now this one, I do want to get rather close, I, but I, there again, I don't want to touch it. And for each one of these um, rainbows, as I'm doing them, I want to try and keep an odd number. So we have right now three solid colors. And of course, as I add to it, there will be more, but I do want to start out with three. You can do five. You know, if you did thinner colors, um, you know, you could get five in there. If you wanted to do seven, which one of mine will probably be around seven different colors that I'll incorporate into it. And you'll see that as, as I get closer to that one. Um, this one is obviously some pretty bold colors. And that always makes it fun. So we have a blue, we have a purple, and now I'm working with a green. Okay. And so let's make that just a little bit darker up in this area. Okay, so I do have my three there. So now I think what I want to do is put in a couple of very thin um A couple of very thin lines so this one is yeah a different kind of blue and for this one because I do want it to be thin I'm using my 01 uh, brush so we'll keep that and then I'm going to put in uh, I think I'm gonna use that same purple that I used up there only I'm going to do a thinner line and it's a little bit darker. You know, I have a little more paint on my brush, so it does kind of change the, the tone of the color. And also, uh, keep in mind when you're working with watercolor paints that they will dry lighter than what they are when you originally put them on here. So I have these two started. While those are drying, we're gonna move down. And for my next one, uh, because this is the month of June and it's Pride Month, I want to make a rainbow for for Pride Month. So for this one, we'll start out with red. And all right, so for this one, and these I'm going to keep kind of thin, although I am using my number eight brush. Okay, so I be, just because I'm going to have quite a few colors with this. And so I want it thinner than than the first two that I did. All right, so we're going to do the red. And then we'll do orange. And for all of these, I am using quite a bit of color on the brush. I want it, the colors to be nice and bold and bright. And uh, for this one, I'm going to make it a little thicker. And see, that's another fun thing that you can do is as you're creating 
these rainbows. You can do some with thicker lines, thinner lines. Um, you know, just make it your own. All right, so there's a pretty thick line. And you can see in that area how the orange is rather light. And that's okay. I'm going to leave it like that. I love it. All right, so now I'm going to take a yellow. I'll get some yellow in here. Yellow. It's always nice to add a little bit of yellow to any of these designs because it's nice and bright. And yellow is just a very happy color. So here we go. And it almost looks like I have a loose hair from my paintbrush stuck in there. There, got that out. All right, so now I want to go to green. And for the green, we're going to use the emerald green. You know, it's a nice bright green. There are so many shades of greens. There are shade, so many shades of oranges. Um, you know, so many different shades that you can just really create your own. All right, so here we go with the green. And this is kind of a thicker one. Okay. And so now we're going to do a blue. And I think for the blue, I'm going to do just a thin thin line on this one. And for this one, I'm using a cerulean blue. Uh, so let's do, you can see how vibrant that is. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, yes, yes. All right, so let's bring this one around. That is perfect. And then for the very last one, will be a purple, and I'm going to go back to the thicker brush which you may not want to, you know, flip-flop back and forth like that, and that's fine. You know, if you want to stick with one size brush, um, that works. So for this one, I'm using a, just a violet purple. All right. And here we go. How cool is that? Is that absolutely beautiful or what? And then wait till we start adding the accents to these. It really livens them up. And you can see how all of the endings for these, you know, they're not precise. They're just, um, you know, they're just kind of loose. And that's what makes it look so cool. Okay, so then for the next one, I'm going to work in, oh, browns and Indian red. Um, you know, some more earthy tones, because I do love earthy tones, and especially with rainbows. So this is, this is an Indian red that I have right here. And let's just bring this around a little bit. Okay. You can see this one. I want to make this one, I think, a little bit thicker. Yeah, just a little bit thicker. And this one, I'm not going to use as many uh, colors in the arches. I'm going to limit this one to three. And then with this, um, they're all going to be a little bit thicker. And then also the little accents that I put on there are going to really make it pop quite a bit. So we have the Indian red, and now I'm going to use a yellow okra. And this one, you know, as you can see on all of these, I'm pretty, pretty consistent with not touching the colors. If you wanted to go ahead and touch the colors, you know, not have the little white gap in between, what you would want to do is paint one color you know, one of the arches on, and then for the next arch, let it dry really well. And then uh, once it is good and dry, then go ahead and print the, or paint the next one on. And maybe I'll do that on one, one of my last two rainbows that I'm painting, just so that you get an idea of how you would go about doing that. 
All right, so we have that uh, for another color with this. I think I'm going to go out on a limb here and give one of my metallics a nice solid um, rainbow. So for the metallics, I don't even know what the name of this one is. It's, um, yeah, I don't even have the names of them, to be honest with you. But it's a coppery. And I think the coppery color will go wonderful with this. Oh, yeah, look at how cool that is. I'm not sure if you can see it real well on the video, but in real life, this is so cool. This might end up being one of my favorites. All right. And my intentions with these metallic paints is to use those for a lot of the accents on these rainbows, you know, with along with the, the black marker because I think it will make it pop. And on this one, I do want to bring that down a little bit more. All right. Okay, so that's going to be cool. It's going to be very cool. So then for my last two, uh, like I said, I think what I will do is I'm going to work on some greens for this one, I think. And with this, I'm going to paint my first arch of my rainbow. Here, let's kind of not use quite as wet of a brush. Okay, this is a nice limey green. And actually, the name of this is, this is sap green. So it's, and you can see, you know, as I do the thicker, more paint on the brush. It doesn't look quite as limey, but we want to keep it light. And I'm going to leave that darker area there. So I'm going to let that dry. And while that's drying, I'll start on the last one. And so for the last one, I think I'm going to work in some... Huh. I think on this one, I'll work on some... Uh, well, maybe some purples and oranges and, you know, just some fun colors together. And then, so for this one, I think, uh, let's do something a little thinner on the outside. A little thinner and lighter. And then I'll show you this one. This one is going to be very different, just to give you an idea. And that's all, all of these are, just some ideas uh, to maybe, you know, if you sit down and you want to get started on something and it gives you some ideas and gets your creative juices flowing, that's exactly what we want. So for this one, I'm going to do, I have the purple on there, and now I'm going to do uh, a blue. Now with this one, I'm going to do it really far in, and you'll see why. Okay, so this one, we've got this huge gap because we're going to do some cool stuff in between. All right, so we have that. And then um, I think I'll do a green on this one too. We'll keep this kind of kind of in the blue-green family, blue-green, purple. And then I'm going to do another one. This one will be really different. Okay, so here we go. All right, so this one, it still isn't quite dry, so we're going to give that a little bit of time. So while that's drying, what I want to do with this one is take uh, like an orangish color. Now I've, I've changed to my number one uh, brush because I do want some th thin lines. Okay, so we're just going to go around with this orange and put some fun lines in. Kind of different. And wait until all of these are done. They're gonna be so darn cute. You're gonna to wanna to sit down and, and start painting rainbows. And you know what? Rainbows are a fun, happy thing to paint, so how about it? In fact, last month on my Patreon, or uh, no, actually for this month, the month of June, 
you know, I send out hand painted greeting cards to my top tier. And in that, I did have uh, a rainbow that I painted. And I've gotten so many comments back about how they absolutely love it. And uh, so I'll probably do another one at some point, um, you know, to, to my patrons. I try and, you know, if they request something, I, I definitely make it happen because they, they really enjoy every month the different um, individual individual and original pieces of artwork that they that they receive from me so okay so then for this one i'm going to take this it's a reddish color and we're just going to do some they aren't really circles they're more of a oval and this color let's see this is uh crimson it's a crimson hue so we'll put some of these in, going around. See how this one is so different than the others? I probably should have kind of mixed them up a little bit to begin with, huh? That's all right. By the, like I said, by the time we're done with all of them, they're all going to be so unique and so cool. And now also, once I have these completed, I will be uploading this sheet with all six of these to my Patreon and if you are a member, then you can go on there. Um, probably by the end of this week, it's not going to be today. You know, it's going to be a couple of days, but you'll be able to go on to Patreon and download this and with the colors and everything, just as you'll see it once it's finished. So you'll be able to go on there, download it, print it off. And if you want to cut each one of these out, and maybe, you know, write a little saying on the back to give to someone or put them in individual little frames. You know, whatever you want to do with them, they'll be on there for download. So be sure to check that out if you're a member. And uh, if you're not, go ahead and sign up. And, you know, there's always cool stuff on there. And I'm starting to add more, um, more and more all the time. Okay, so I'm going to wait on that one because I want that one to dry so I don't smear it with my hand. That, that'd be just my luck. All right, so for these, I want to come back to these for a few minutes and just start adding some fun details and accents. Okay, so for this first one, uh, we can go through. And I would say on the orange, let's take some, some red. And maybe just add dots. You can add dots and dots and lines to everything. Dots and lines are fun. If you ever doodle, which I doodle quite a bit, and you'll see in one of my more recent videos uh, that I put up just a couple days ago, I framed a couple of pieces that I had doodled. Uh, maybe like a year ago. So the, the video actually is just showing what you can do with some of your artwork once you have it completed. Okay, so then on, let's see, what do we want to do here? Let's take some, this is actually a white. It's, a, it's called Chinese white. So for this one, we're just going to go through and add lines. I think you can see that. Um, you know, it's not, it's not like jump out at you. It's more subtle, the, these lines. And that's okay if they're subtle. That's kind of what we want. All right, oopsie, I've already, how'd I do that? All right, you can see right here where I did accidentally smear that so I'm not going to panic about it what I'm going to do is just grab a little water on my brush put it on there and then take a piece of paper towel and dab it okay now it doesn't like 100% get rid of it but at least it's not jumping out in your face right so then you want to make sure that it's dry, and then I just go back and add that in again. Alrighty. Okay, so then for this, 
Now I'm going to take my black marker and on the heart, I'm just going to kind of loosely outline it. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then on this, um, let's see, what do we want to do here? Hmm. I think maybe for this one, I'm just going to draw a line right up through and around. So we'll let that one sit for a couple of minutes and maybe something will, an idea will, I'll look at that and say, oh, maybe we need to add this or add that. So over on this one, I think we'll go through with the marker and just add some little lines. I almost need a thicker marker. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I have got, um, I got all sizes of these Micron markers. I absolutely love them. So this is an O3, so it's a little bit heavier than the O1 that I was just using. So let's go back over these. We can add some lines all around. Okay. Pretty cool, right? Yep. Okay. Now another fun tool that I use for doing little accents, on that one we did some uh, white paint. Now this is a white gel pen. So with white gel pen, I want to go around on the blue and just kind of do a squiggly. And using the gel pen, it's just easier. Um, obviously, the drawing time is eliminated. And it's a finer line. Now, if you wanted to use, um, like I used the white paint on, the, on this one, you could do that. Uh, you could also use white gouache if you wanted to. But I like using a gel pen. See, now we'll put little dots in. Like I said, dots and lines, they're our doodle friends. They're like the staple of doodles. Okay. How fun is that? Hmm? Okay, so we've got that. And then um, I think... On this one in the green we can go go on into that one with some blue and add some dots pretty cool or what there we go and see, I like to add the hearts. I'm kind of a heart person. I like to add those to everything, but I'm not going to do it in the middle of this one. Um, I'll tell you what I am going to do. In between this blue and this purplish, I'm going to go ahead because it is nice and dry. And I like to have yellow, just a little hint of yellow in just about everything because I think it just makes things pop. Okay, so I'm just going to go through. And put in a little splash of yellow with that. There we go. All right, and I think that one is good for now. So now we go down to our pride. And in the pride, um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do with that. I do want to put some hearts in here for sure. That is a given, all right? I want to do little ones, so just kind of just kind of add them in, and they don't have to be perfect; they just have to be cute. That's all that we require. Cute. All right, there. Now, how cool is that? So we have our three little hearts in there, and on this one, I am going to take my. Let's see, my 05 nib marker, and I want to um, put some lines, 
going around here. Dress it up, make this a lot of fun because if you've ever been to a Pride event, they're always fun, full of color, bright, cheery, and that's exactly what we want to do here. Make everything fun, bright, and cheery. Okay, so there's that. And I'm going to say, um, let's put some black dots going around here. Okay. Once again, I don't know what that is there. Dots, dashes, squiggles. They all add to the whole doodle effect, right? Now, I do want to be careful that I don't smudge my hearts. Okay. There we go with that. And then maybe, um, I think on this one we need to do a squiggle. And I'm doing it in the black with the black marker. And this is my 05 nib marker. Um, like I said, there's, you know, there's very, very fine to very, very thick. Now, if you have a Sharpie, you know, the fine point Sharpie, a lot of times that works wonderful. So don't hesitate to use that. Don't feel like you have to run out and buy these. If you do go out to buy a marker, a black marker for doing accents, just make sure that it's a waterproof. And I say that often. I, I like to repeat that one for sure. So with this, um, I'm just going to take a darker orange and let's see what do we want to do with this now I don't think I do want to do a darker orange I think with this one I'm going to take my metallic paints again and it's going to be a little um oh just a little muted it's going to be a gold metallic all right and what I want to do with this gold metallic, because I want sparkles. So let's put sparkles in between the blue and the purple. And it is a little bit of a yellowish color, a goldish color, but it's metallic. And so in real life, it's beautiful. All right. So I think that's good for that one for now. Okay, and now we come over to this one. Actually, let's let's go down to my one that I wanted to dry really well because now that is dry. So I'll add another layer. And with this, I think I want to do an orange. All right, so the orange, and I want it to touch. See? See how this is a totally different effect. Now with this orange, it's not, not real heavy, uh, not a ton of paint on the brush. There is a lot of water, but I want it to dry lighter. You know, I don't want it to be really in your face. And you can see I did a thicker line with that, so we're good. All right, so now we're gonna let that dry. Um, and while that's drying, we can always go back to our neutral colors here. And with our neutral colors, I want to go through and just draw some, I think just draw, draw some lines. You know, in the one we had used paint to do this, but as I mentioned, I like my, my gel white gel pens. They work really nice. I use white gel pens and the black micron markers um, for so many of my accents just because they're fun. So you can see with all of these rainbows how different they are, how you can come up with different designs, different color schemes, the thicknesses, uh, I think in the middle of this one, I'm 
going to do something just a little bit different here, which I don't do this very often, but I think this will be fun. Let's take just a little bit of a light, light red. Well, it's going to be light red. Um, I'm going to paint an oval in here. Okay. This is just a reddish color. I'm doing a kind of a real loose oval. All right, so we have that. And then uh, I think with my pen, I want to draw just the thin line. And now this is my 05 nib. So I want to just draw a line in between in my white zone. Okay, that looks kind of cool, right? And then I think I'll do one kind of outlining my metallic gold, I guess. All right, so we have that. And now this, uh, this light red that I just painted, I might want to let that dry for just a minute. That makes me just a little bit nervous. So, all right. And then on this one, I'm going to take some darker brown. And again, we're going to paint some dots. I do want to keep it kind of dark so that it stands out quite a bit. So, you know, aren't these so cool? I mean, they're just a lot of fun, and you can do so much with them. So I'll tell you what. On, okay, so this one, I keep doing a little bit and letting it dry. That looks like it's pretty dry at the moment. And uh, so on this one, I'm going to take my, uh, this is a much lighter blue. This is a like a cerulean blue. And so for this one, I'm going to do a thin line. This is with my number one. And on this one, you can see where I'm leaving space, like I did on the other ones, right? Just gives it a whole different look. And so once we come around with this, let's get just a little bit more on here. There we go. Okay, so we have that thin blue line. And now I'm going to take my number eight brush and with a darker green, this is called hooker's green. So with my darker green, I'm going to do kind of a thick. There, I actually want, want it to be much darker. Okay, so this is another thick one. I'll show you what we're going to do in the middle here. This is going to be fun. Now, I do want this to be darker in color. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Okay, perfect. That is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, and now I think... Um, on, well, we're going to let that dry for a minute. So I think on this one, what I want to do is with my marker, I kind of want to outline these, these little ovals just to add some texture and character to them. Right. And then, uh, on this one, let's also take, oh, uh, let's see, let's take a, Something kind of fun. Let's do a that orangish color, the same as what we have in those little lines there. We're gonna go like this and just go kind of like dashes, okay? We have them as lines up top. Now we're doing dashes. And that's always fun. In fact, we should put maybe we do some dashes let's see 
first of all, now that this one is dry, let's move down here. So now that this is dry, I want to just make a little happy face. There we go, right? Okay, so that's kind of a cute one. And um, then in this one that I've been I've been slowly letting it dry. I'm going to take uh, my orange again, okay? So in the middle of this one, let's just draw a flower, kind of a kind of a loosey-goosey type of flower. And my flowers, I always try, when I'm doing these type of flowers anyway, not realistic, but these fun ones, I always make sure that there's five petals. I do everything in odd numbers. Now, no, I think I picked that up from a designer years ago, uh, a flower designer actually, that had suggested, you know, everything be done in five, in odd numbers, not necessarily fives, but in odd numbers. And you can see how that's bleeding into that a little bit. So that's kind of cool. Let's do that on all of them. There. Oh yeah, look at how cool that is. See, that is just really cool. All right, so back to this one. Let's uh, let's do with some red. Let's do some dots, some really thick dots. And to do these, I'm just kind of you know with the paint on my brush, I just kind of flatten the brush out is all I'm doing. They almost look like a, um, kind of like a pod or a, a seed type of thing, right? When they're long like that. They're very, very cool. Very cool. And see that, that red kind of, it all kind of works together. You know, at, at at a certain point, it all works together. Now, with this one, I'm going to, once again, add some of my metallic paints. And with this one, this is more of a, hmm, I guess more of a brownish, rusty color. And what do I want to do here? I think with this one, actually, I think I will go on here and add some little dashes just something a little bit different and it really makes it sparkle okay so we go around and add some dashes there we go and i think on this one we should probably put in just a little bit of black accents um, and there again, I'm just going to draw right up through this color and around. And so you could even, if you wanted to go like, uh, let's see which one deserves it. Let's say this one with your marker, you can do some big, big dots all the way around. I want to make sure I wasn't smearing something. Now how cool is this? The more little um, accents and, and little dashes, dots, whatever, you know, it just adds to the whole picture itself. And I know sometimes when you see um, rainbows somewhere, you know, quite often you might see some little tassels at the end. So even on this one, just for the heck of it, let's go up to here and we'll take some, uh, let's see, let's do some, some red, I guess. So on here we could do, you know, just a little round and then something like that. 
and then over here same thing now with just some some little things like that so so I think these are pretty much done and uh, I just want to give you an idea of some some different things that you could do so here's a couple and I think I have to scoot it up just so that you can see all of them I don't think they all fit into the frame and then my two down below and uh, so that is everything for my um, for my different colored rainbows and as I mentioned earlier if you really like these and you want to download these in color they will be on my patreon uh, later th this week if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and I'll be sure to get back to you and then also please like and subscribe to my youtube channel and watch for more videos because they are coming out weekly. So I appreciate your time. Have a good day, and I look forward to working with you soon.